So this patient is actually not doing well at the moment. So I'm rushing up to meet anesthesia at bedside so we can get this patient down in the IR suite and get this problem solved. I literally just saved that person's life. You guessed it, it is another beautiful day in New York City, and we are back at it again with yet another seven days straight on call. Yes, this is my third week now on call for seven straight days, and we are doing another installment, if you will, of a seven day stretch covering three different hospitals on the west side and also the east side as well of Manhattan. So it should be a doozy. And if you watched my prior video where I covered all three hospitals for seven straight days, you know, sometimes it doesn't end exactly how you want it. Because last time I had to come in at the end of the week for an emergency, but what can you do? And as usual, I'll bring you along for the ride. Let's go ahead, see what happens this week. All right, and just like that, we are done with day one, Monday, of my seven day journey on call. It was, that's so loud. It's really ruining my video. All right, so anyways, just finished day one. Like I said, it was a pretty uneventful day. We had, well, wait, wait, wait. Trash, 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 trash. And more trash on the sidewalk as usual in New York City. Fashion. All right, so I keep getting interrupted, but I had a pretty uneventful day today. Well, I did one of my favorite cases, which you may or may not know is a uterine fibroid embolization, which it's just so gratifying getting to that huge, juicy uterine artery and blocking off all the blood flow, killing the fibroids, and it has such a good result. Followed that up with a nice percutaneous nephrostomy tube for hydronephrosis, followed by, what else did I do? I did something else, but I can't really remember it right now. Anyways, I'm heading home now, going to get a good night's sleep, hopefully not get caught in tonight and come back in the morning. So I will check in with you all on Tuesday morning. It's a pretty busy day tomorrow, so see how it goes. Good morning everybody it is day two of my seven days on call and let me just tell you if you notice anything different about me today it is because i am wearing a jacket because it is about 50 degrees outside and a little on the chilly side however i absolutely love this weather and i mean i just love it i don't know how to, like when fall comes around falls in the air you get a nice pumpkin spice latte because i'm basic and this beautiful weather with a nice jacket on you don't sweat anymore, it's beautiful. So anyways, we have a couple good cases today. Do another fibroid embolization first thing this morning and we'll see how that goes. And shaping up to be a good day. Davis last words, right? So it's shaping out to be a pretty slow day today so far. I just finished my uterine fibroid immobilization. We did it in like 30 minutes, which is crazy, super fast. And uh, if you don't know what a uterine fibroid immobilization is, I'm thinking about doing an entire video devoted to it because I think a lot of women in particular will benefit from this kind of knowledge because a lot of people have these symptoms of fibroids and they don't really know what the treatment options are. So I may do a video on that. Let me know in the comments below if you think I should do an entire video devoted to that. I did post a little bit on my Instagram page today talking about fibroids and how we embolize them. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you could probably learn something if you do. Anyways, we're going to keep on trucking today. Might do a biliary drain in the near future. And I don't know what else is coming down the pipe. We'll see. All right, change of plans. We're going to Starbucks to get a cup of coffee because I'm cold and I could use a pick me up. All 
right, so I left work just now because I had to pick up my wife's wedding band. Oh wait, no, I had to pick up my wife's engagement ring because it was getting clean. This is a free plug for Lauren B. Jewelry. That place is bomb, and if you're ever looking for an engagement ring, go there because they will take care of you like they did me. Going home right now. Hopefully I don't head back in the hospital tonight. I say that after every time I leave. Hopefully I don't go into the hospital, but that's the truth. I don't want to go back unless I have to. So I'll check in in the morning, pending tonight is a good night. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to show you all that I'm currently in Midtown, Midtown East right now. And usually this place is like buzzing with people because this is where everybody works <laughs> in the city. Well, a lot of business folks work in this part of the city. And usually it's like completely packed with people going in and out on the streets. And mind you, it is currently 4.45 p.m. right now. And there's like hardly anybody around. Okay, I'm leaving for real this time. Okay, so I know I was gonna go home now, but so I was just riding my bike all the way home on the First Avenue. Uh, and there was a guy who was on his bike as well, was in the bike lane. And a car that was in the bike lane opened his car door the biker in front of me hit the car door, flew off his bike, this older gentleman, and a couple of people stopped to help him. I stopped to help him, whatever. That's what we're supposed to do, right? That's what people do. However, the guy who hit him, or the guy who opened his car door, didn't want to be held liable, so he just fled the scene. And I called 911, got the paramedics there, and everyone else that was around just left too. So, like, it was literally just me and this guy on the floor in the bike lane on the concrete in the middle of the road waiting for the paramedics and no one stayed around to help. It was just a very interesting situation. So I'm not telling you this because, oh, I'm such a great person, but at the end of the day, it is my responsibility to help people who were hit or were in an accident and to make them feel comfortable. But I just was a little perturbed at how many people just kind of left including the guy who actually was involved in the accident. I don't know. Luckily that guy was super nice and didn't want to like press charges or anything, but anyways, that's the day. Call it a night. Check in, in the morning. All right. So I actually didn't film today at all, but I did just have to come into the ER to see a patient right now for an acute pulmonary embolism that we wanted to make sure we don't need to do anything for. Whoops, can't get in. Good, can't get in, like I said. This patient with an acute pulmonary embolism in the ER and I had to go check them out to make sure they don't need any catheter directed thrombolysis or thrombectomy. That's why I have the N95 mask on because we have to assume everybody has COVID that comes in through the ED because they are not tested. So currently deciding if we are going to do anything tonight, the patient is pretty stable. So I'm going to talk it over with my attending and uh, go from there. So basically what happens now is I saw the patient, I discussed it with my attending and given the fact that it's a pulmonary embolism, we have to have a large discussion amongst interventional radiology, pulmonary critical care medicine and hematology on basically what the best next step is to help this patient out. It can go either way. So if the patient's stable, you can just start them on blood thinners and kind of watch them and see how they do. You can also get us involved at the same time, depending on clinical symptoms of the patient and the vital signs, et cetera, et cetera. And we could do something called catheter-directed thrombolysis or suction thrombectomy, which is basically where we go into the femoral vein, bring the catheter up into the heart and the pulmonary arteries, and we basically suck out the clot with a big catheter, almost like the size of my pinky, like a straw, just suck out the clock. Cause it's pretty soft, it's acute. It'll come out like toothpaste. So right now I'm just kind of sitting back, waiting for all the attendings to discuss amongst themselves and we'll come up with a plan. Maybe I'll get to do a procedure. Maybe I'll go home, we'll see. So we ended up seeing the patient and the patient was doing actually better than we anticipated. So we don't have to do any procedure tonight, which is fantastic. Now I will say if the patient decompensates or whatnot, we may have to still do the procedure, but at least we're off the hook now. 
and it is about 9 p.m. I'm heading home now. Hopefully that patient doesn't do worse overnight and I have to come in. But otherwise, I'll see you all in the morning. All right, so everything actually worked out well last night. Never heard anything else about that patient overnight. About to go check on them right now because they are admitted. And we have a pretty busy day on the schedule today. I'm a little tired. I don't know, I got plenty of sleep, but just the fact that I had to stay here late uh, kind of wears you out a little bit, I guess. It's just a long day, so now I'm tired today. But we have a pretty full day today. So let's get to work. All right, so it's about 6 a.m going into the emergency department at another hospital uptown. So I was basically called about another pulmonary embolism case overnight, uh, which is two for two in the last two nights. I didn't have to come in for that one last night either, but I did have to come check on them early this morning before I go to work. And unfortunately it is at another hospital uptown. So I took an Uber there this morning, saw the patient in the emergency department, and now, I'm headed back down to my hospital for my regularly scheduled work program. I only got a few hours of sleep last night because I was dealing with this patient and making sure they were okay, but it is what it is. And just like that, the Friday is over with the sun hitting my face. I'm not gonna lie, there was a point around 2 p.m. where I started to kind of fade, 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 fade. I hit a wall after a procedure, but I went and got a monster and a bite to eat. And now I'm feeling good until I crash a second time today. But luckily, I got out of there at a reasonable hour and we will see what comes in over the next two days. Remember, I'm still on call until Monday morning, so anything can happen up until then. And uh, I guess I'll check in this weekend. I'll probably be back at one of these hospitals for some sort of procedure, depending on how emergent something comes up. But you know, like I said, covering three hospitals, so something's bound to happen over the next two days. But if it does, I'll bring you along for the ride and we'll see how it goes. If you remember this hallway, from one of my last videos, it's because I was here in the middle of the night. But it is now Saturday morning at almost 7 a.m. and I'm here to do kind of like an emergent, urgent case. Just doing a CT guided case. Should be pretty quick this morning at about 9 or 10 a.m. And I still have to see a few patients up here, write some notes, all that good stuff. But uh, I hope that's it for the day. Now, anytime you're doing a CT abscess drainage, you want to put these on your shoes because there's a good chance there's some fluids that may spill over in this region. And you don't want that. Much better. All right, everybody. So that officially concludes this seven day stretch on call. Now it's only Saturday afternoon right now. So there is a chance that I still could get called in just like what happened the last two weeks that I was on call, but you never know. So if I can pull off this whole weekend without getting called in overnight, it'll be a miracle. Well, I almost made it the full week without getting called in. It's now Sunday, it's almost 7 p.m. I have a call about a bleed from a trauma. The patient already went to the OR, couldn't control the bleeding, so that's where I come in. So this patient is actually not doing well at the moment. So I'm rushing up to meet anesthesia at bedside so we can get this patient out of the IR suite and get this problem solved. All right, so I have to say, we cranked that case out pretty quickly. And you know, this is what it's all about because it's Sunday night, it's almost 9 p.m. now. You guys know when I left and we all complain about we have to come in, we get called in at night. We have this patient who is bleeding uncontrollably into their abdomen and hemorrhagic shock. And if we don't stop the bleeding, there's a strong likelihood that the patient will not survive this. So again, we get kind of angry when we get called in in the middle of the night, but then you put it all into perspective and you finish this case, it's 9 p.m. at night. And then I realized I literally just saved that person's life. 
So it feels pretty good, even though we had to come in in the middle of the night on my seventh straight day on call. But this is what it's all about. This is literally what it's all about. And you feel, this must be like what a comedian feels like when they perform on stage or whatnot, but you feel on cloud nine, you feel fantastic, I'm tired as heck, don't care, because it's just saved a life. And that's what it's all about. So I better not get called in tonight because that's about it for me. I start clinic this whole week starting tomorrow. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you all on the next video.